These are the second topic of project planning where we are going to learn about programming techniques. In planning techniques, the commonly used in construction are bar chart, line of balance and time grid diagram. And the network techniques that commonly used in construction is uh, Critical path method, precedence diagram, and also PERT, which is program evaluation and review techniques. But in your syllabus, we are going to introduce two, the first two of the network techniques, which are the critical path method and the precedence diagram. Okay, before we move on to the um, critical path method and precedence diagram, let's look at what is bar chart. Um, as you, as this has been mentioned to you earlier uh, in, in the previous class, uh, the bar chart is in, it's been invented by Henry Gunn Chart uh, in 1917 uh, to chart on the shadowing. Uh, and what are the bar chart? It's a graphical representation of planned construction activities. Uh, that estimate the activity duration and plan sequence of activity performance. So all activity uh, durations and also the sequences is being uh, put in a graphical uh, representation. And why use bar chart? Because bar chart is a simple way and is respiration easy to read in graphical form. And until today, uh, we are still use gun chart. Uh, these are the examples of uh, bar chart. And you can see that these are the activities and also these are the work days. Work days can be in days or weeks or months. Although bar chart is simple, but however it has weaknesses. The first weakness is it, it does not show relationship between project activities um, which means from project A to project B does not have the relationship uh, and the second uh, weaknesses is it unable to determine the critical path or the critical activities as you know that uh, critical activities we will determine the project duration and it also does not relate changes, delay or change of one activity to entire project. It means that if that one, if project A delay, it cannot give a relationship or it cannot relate the changes to the uh, other activity that could delay the entire project. Okay, to overcome the weaknesses of bar chart, um, there are several uh, planning techniques uh, established um, previously in construction that can be used in construction. The first one is uh, CPM which was being developed in 1950 uh, in, and PERT, the Program Evaluation Re Review Techniques is developed in 1950 as well by US Navy. And um, CPM and PERT have much in common and PERT is usually being used when there is a sophisticated uh, project uh, because the use of probability concept uh, and it deals with uncertain activity duration while CPM use a single fixed duration for each activities. In order to choose the suitable scheduling type for the project um, it depends on a few factors, which are the first one, familiarity of techniques to be used. It means that in the project team, all project team members need to familiar with these uh, techniques, the program techniques, and it is acceptable by all parties involved. The second one is type and size of the project. Um, if the project is a huge project, uh, but there is repetitive, then it is best to use line of balance. 
for a medium to a large project with numerous tasks, it is best to use a CPM of precedence. And if, it's, if it is a small project, it is best to use only bar chart. And the third factors um, depends on the purpose of the scheduling, why you need the scheduling for. What is the network analysis? Um, network analysis is a method of, of project planning done on activities so that it can connect to each other. So meaning uh, it can connect from activity 1 to activity 2, activity 3. So there will be a, a relationship from one activity to another. It also can optimize the usage of resources uh, for monitoring and control process. And the purpose is to ascertain the critical path for the project. As you know that the critical path is very important uh, because it uh, determines the total uh, project duration. There are three types of network analysis, which are critical path method, precedence diagram, and PERT. Um, let's look at the techniques. Um, the first one is um, activity on arrow. This is what we call as CPM. Um, and activity on node is being called as precedence. Activity on arrow is where arrow represent the activity. And activity are represented by arrow, whereas the start or end of the each activity is represented by a node. Um, and one of the lacking of these activities is where the, there are the existence of dummy activity, which I'm going to explain to you in the next slide. And the dummy activity will complicate the network and sometimes it will cause confusion to the uh, uh, team members. And the second one is uh, activity on node, where the activity, uh, the node represent the activity. Okay, these are the steps in building a network model. First, you need to define the activity. Uh, the second is you need to order the activity, what comes first, what comes second, and what comes next. And then you need to draw the network diagram. Then, when the network diagram is being developed, it needs to be assigned the duration for each of the activities, assign the resources, assign the cost, and calculate what is the earliest start uh, of the activities, the late start of the activities, and, and also schedule the activity start finish time. In developing a scheduling program, um, project manager needs to understand the, uh, all the order of how the job to be accomplished in the field. Uh, it means that it needs to know the sequence of the project. Uh, what are the uh, various activities of the project and how does this related in sequence, in logical sequence. For example, um, what I meant by logical relationship is you need to strip topsoil first before you cut and fill. You cannot cut and fill, then you strip topsoil. So this um, the sequence, the logical sequence, usually uh, being um, being done by the uh, project manager with the bus experience. Okay, um, these are the another example, which are the formwork and fix the bar first. Then only you can pour the concrete. You cannot pour the concrete first. Then only you do the formwork and fix the rebar. Yeah? So there must be the uh, logical relationship from one activity to another. Okay, um, these are the arrow diagram. Uh, the arrow should always be drawn showing progress from left to right, not right to left. Okay, so this is very important, left to right. Um, and basic types of relationship found in a network. One on one relationship between activities. So this what it means by one on one. Activity B 
Then activity G. Activity B is hang wall wallpaper and activity G install the mirror. Um, these are the many activities to among several activities. So from one activity comes many activities here. Yeah. So you activity B where the uh, hang wallpaper on wall. Uh, uh, when activity B completes, then activity F, uh, G, and H can start. Or you can also have a relationship where one or many relationship to a single activity. So where activity A, activity B, activity C completes, then activity G can start. Or you can have many relationships among several activities. For example, activity A, activity B, activity C completes, then activity F, activity G, and activity H can start. Okay, these are the critical path method. What are critical path methods? A project scheduling method where activities are arranged based on interrelationships and the longest time passed throughout the network. And what are the advantage of uh, CPM? It can reduce the overlooking essential tasks provided in the blueprint for long-range planning coordination of the project. So when there is a, a project, um, that includes relationship from one activity to another, you can reduce the risk uh, of the essential task. It can also identify the critical task, easier to plan and schedule, control, determine the resources required and also improve the productivity. And however, there is a lacking in CPM where it sometimes difficult to understand for beginner and computer software can be used but it's expensive. Okay, the next topic is um, how does dummies apply in uh, critical path method? Sometimes in developing the uh, critical path method, um, there is a, a difficulty in making the network logical. Uh, this is where the uh, dummy is being introduced and the dummy usually is drawn as a dotted line uh, with no duration. And the dummy plays the, an important role to make the network uh, becomes more logical. For example, um, we have activity A, B, C, D. A, place concrete slab in garage. B, install the garage door. C, install pre-finished shop cabinet. And D, install garage door opener. When you draw the network diagram uh, for activity A, B, C and D, it shows like this. Where activity A and activity B complete, then only activity C and activity can start. However, um, activity C can start after activity A and B complete. But activity D here can complete can start when activity B completes. So in order to make the network becomes logical, this is where the dummy is introduce. So activity A, B, C and D. So when you use a dummy, you introduce a dummy, it shows that activity C can start when activity A and activity B completes while activity D does not have to wait for A. Uh, as soon as activity B completes, activity D can start. Okay, um, let's make let's do some examples. Uh, this is a seven activities, um, and these are the predecessor for 
each of the activities. Predecessor means activity before uh, this activity starts. The network can be drawn in this manner. Uh, where activity A and activity completes, then activity C starts. Uh, this looks illogical. That is where we introduce dummy um, between activity A and activity C. Um, when you add this activity G in the network diagram, it shows some difficulties. Um, where we want that activity D and activity E to be the predecessor of activity G. So this is where the dummy is being introduced in this network. Okay, let's do some examples to make you understand of a critical path method. Uh, so these are the activities from activity A right up to activity N and these are the uh, predecessor for each of the activities. Okay, let's draw the network diagram. So you can see that activity A has no predecessor and activity B, C and D starts after activity A starts. So you can draw like this. And activity E, F, G starts when activity D completes. So you can draw E, F, G. Okay. So, the trickiest part is activity H. Activity H can start when B, C and E. B, C and E completes. So, this uh, requires a dummy to make the network become logical. So, you can introduce dummy between B and C and C and E and you can um, proceed with activity H. And activity I starts when F and G complete. Once activity F and G completes, you can uh, start with I. But however, this look illogical. This is where uh, the dummy is introduced between the um, network. And the next one is activity J when B completes. And the next one is activity K when H and I complete. So you can introduce another dummy so that you can start with activity K. And activity L starts when H completes. So this is um, this is easy. And M starts when I completes. And the last one is activity N when K, L, M, J complete. So this will require a lot of dummies. Now that you understand the uh, critical path method and to draw the network analysis, you can now uh, try to do this problem and solve this problem. This problem is similar to the examples and you can use the examples uh, to refer in solving this problem. So that's all. Thank you. Bye. Assalamualaikum.